My name is Chris Farrell, uh, I'm a teacher in CES. I'm also kind of from this from the perspective of this talk, I'm looking more from the uh, from the CPD side, from the continuous professional development side. I'm head of CPD in in, in all of our schools. Um, so we run uh, basically workshops every two weeks, action research groups, and we get a lot of feedback from teachers and one of the big things that I get a look back a lot from, from teachers is how kind of burnt out they are trying to get students to develop, to move up to the next level. So my, my whole kind of idea in this one is to provide practical advice. Not the theory really behind it too much, but to provide practical tips which you can do uh, on Monday morning, um, hopefully. So um, what, one of the big problems with the kind of current focus um, in terms of classroom or getting students to move away from the classroom, getting students to be um, independent learners, um, is that um, the um, skill development, um, especially receptive skills, is really product focused. So if you're giving people reading tasks for homework, um, all it's really focusing on is finding the product. They're not actually being asked to develop a skill. Um, and then in terms of listening, what I found for homework, we were talking in one of the previous previous discussions is about how passive listening tasks are, especially homework listening tasks. Very frequently it's go and listen to the radio or watch a movie or something like that, but what is the student actually doing? There's no focus listening, there's no emphasis, there's no stress or pressure on them to actually do a task. So there's very little skill development there. And so that's a problem uh, and as, as a result you have obviously the intermediate plateau where a lot of students reach the point where they can kind of understand movies they can understand uh, music or whatever, but they're not actually developing uh, beyond that stage. Um, the writing and speaking uh, as well. We, when we give students writing tasks very frequently, it's, it's not really contextual based for their real life. I mean, maybe you're asking them to write a letter to somebody. Does anybody write letters? Um, you're asking them to do things which perhaps don't really have a relevancy to them. All it is is a task. There's no skill development. They're practicing writing, but are they actually developing the skill? So these can be used obviously as a Lexis task and a grammar correction, but when we correct it, we're correcting the language, not correcting the skill, and that's, that's a problem. Um, and then, uh, was what we were talking about as well um, at the break time, in terms of vocabulary, we're, we're looking more at the discrete meaning of items. Um, I'm mostly teaching Cambridge, Cambridge Advanced Exam at the moment, and one of the big things the use of English tries to test is their ability to understand language in context. So we really look at question types. Uh, are we looking at gap fill questions or, or higher order questions, lower order thinking skills, this kind of thing? Um, like Joanne was saying, uh, how, many, um, how many kind of layers of cognitive processing are you actually developing or testing um, in homework exercises? So in terms of practical skills, one of the important things um, is um, I think kind of one of the one of the most important things is developing a medium of of contact with the student. Um, a lot of teachers don't like to give out their email address. A lot of teachers don't like to obviously give out their phone number or things like that. So if I just click through really quickly. Um, I use Paddles. I don't know if many people use it. Paddle is just a wall that you can throw documents onto, um, and you can keep the Paddle address basically cut out on a piece of paper in your classroom. And you can put all of the pad, anything you want, you can put exercises, reading texts, whatever you want, and they can just go on it. We use it for all of our action research groups in, in terms of professional development. We use it for exam classes. You know, students always say to you, can I do extra exercises? Say, look at the pad, the answers are there as well. You can just do up documents, leave the answers, everything on it. So this can be your medium of communication in order to take the pressure off you. Look at the Padlet. Just look at the Padlet, come back to me. Um, or maybe what you can do is set Padlet tasks on Monday and give them the answers on Friday. Uh, if they didn't do it, it's, it's not your, you know, it's just kind of there, it's on them. Now what we're really trying to do is uh, highlight the deficiencies in their approaches or in current approaches. So when you're correcting writing, for example, you're not saying, you're not only correcting the, the, the language, but you're correcting the approach as well. And um, with things like uh, Padlet and things like uh, the material you're going to provide them and you're facilitating this development, you are um, kind of, you're the training wheels as such. 
and um, removing the dependence on the teacher. One of the big things in terms of teacher development this is going to focus on is uh, allowing the teacher to develop into problem and solutions radar. So if, if the, the reading texts are coming back and the students are always missing something or they're focusing on something, you have to try and understand why in order to best facilitate their development, remove the frustration, um, which obviously goes with this. So, I've got one task. Yeah, I think I'll do it now. Um, I've got one task that I want you to do. I'm going to, this is one app I use for reading, and I just want to show you, and then I'm going to give you about a minute to decide how you would use it. You can use it in class, you can use it at home. I'm just going to do something really quickly. So, I'm going to give you 300 words a minute. And my IELTS Arabic students are on about 80. My Swiss advanced students are on about 250. So, I'm going to give you 300. It's a test. I'm just going to give you an insight. What is that and how would you use it? What are we doing? Okay, just for one minute with the person closest to you, how could you use that uh, application is with your students? No, no, it's information like I said, it's a news article. Or did we just give me one word at a time? Okay, so, so this is um this is an application called Spreader, Speed Reader, um, and how could you use it? How could you use it? Use it as a listening, like you might use listening. Yeah. That you're focusing on a certain word, and yeah. When you hear the word, maybe stuff or bang, maybe with lower, with juniors. So you can actually use it listening with your eyes task, yeah. almost. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. And um, what, what other? Um, you could use it as a vocabulary task. You could stop it and ask them to make sentences with the word. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What else? What other ways? Construct the article that came from. So yeah. they can do text reconstruction. They can do. Um, I've seen students do note taking with this before. I can't do it. I think it's only maybe female students can do it. The men are just really focusing. Um, I, I give them homework tasks in this. So maybe you put up an article in a Padlet and you say, try it, um, try the tasks. You can do it as many times as you want. Now, some students will go home and they'll try it on 400 words a minute and say, I did it 400 words a minute. I read it eight or nine times. I got it. I'm like, well, maybe lower down the word count and watch it less time. So, what I've noticed using this in the past three months is that. Um, IELTS students and Cambridge exam students are actually finished the reading exam before the time um, and it's helping them focus on the key information. They need to focus on key information. They're put under exam stress for homework, basically. Um, the other one I use is QPrompter. It's a prompting tool. It, it shows you like a teleprompter. They don't find that as useful uh, because it still gives you the full sentence and they're distracted to look around. But you can try it as well. Maybe your students might. I'm realizing I'm re really running out of time, so hold on, I'm going to go really quickly. I'll give you all of these links at the very end. So in terms of listening as well, same sort of idea. We're thinking of how do you provide listening tasks for students. So obviously you can go listen to this, listen to that. I use this website which is called Clip It, um, which you can go and record anything. So say you can play a snip of a TED talk or a YouTube talk, record it to Clip It and you can just email us or you can send it to the Padlet or whatever you want to do um, and give it to them on the Monday, give them a few tasks, get them to transcribe it like we were talking about transcription um, and then come back to you on the Friday or whatever and it's there for them to use. They don't have to do it but you provided the structure. If they say my listening skills aren't developing, go do it again, do it again. Um, I also use this one as, we, as, as well. Um, English Club um, This Week in History every week has a new text 
which has the actual text and then it has the recording of the text um, and they do this with transcription exercises. That's their weekly task they have to do. It's every week. And it also it's a little bit of clearer as well, There's a little bit of history there. Um, okay, okay, okay. Um, writing is a little bit more difficult. Um, so a couple of different kind of tactics. What I have been using is um, what is natural, what is needed in the sense of what do they actually do. A lot of people are writing text messages or Facebook posts or things like that. Um, I use a thing called Debatabase um, to, this is what higher level learners generally, to get ideas focused and they're using writing as slow speaking exercises really. So we're going to have a debate but you're going to write the debate. Um, so you might go home and you might get some of the key ideas. Um, they can take these articles, they can cut and paste them into Spreader. Um, they can read them quickly and they can take down if they agree or disagree with the main opinions in them. Um, oh, sorry. Don't touch the screen. Okay. Um, what's really important with the, uh, with the writing is it can't be done in isolation. It can't just be a writing task for writing's sake. There has to be a follow-up uh, or they're writing to disagree or they're writing to agree with somebody uh, or they're writing and then we're going to come in and we're going to disagree with them. Uh, so it's the development of critical thinking skills as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, relevant to the real play world or a role play world. So if you're if you're giving them that, you are, as we did this week with the marriage equality referendum, you are a yes vote and you are a no vote, and they have to. It was interesting. Um, and then, uh, yeah. so Lexus is kind of the most difficult one. Uh, and these are some of the considerations. This is stolen from Felicity O'Dell's talk at the Iotefalon, uh, what to teach, what to test, uh, in terms of in terms of Lexus, and basically we're looking at things like what are you actually giving them homework about when you give them a Lexus homework activity, are you testing denotation, connotation, word formation, word grammar, so we're trying to cover as many bases as possible in our lexical testing in order to facilitate lexical recall, in order to facilitate memory, remembrance and correct use. Yes, kind of got back the time a little bit. Um, yeah, and also I I, uh, I always get my students to keep vocabulary notebooks with the language recorded in at least two context sentences, and um, so even if they forget, they have to go back to the sentence and deduce from meaning, um, because I've noticed and one of the big failings of, of students of doing lectures in classes that students just write down the word, or they might write down the word in the translation in their own language, but they don't know how to use it. So um, that was just a little a little thing. And then the last uh, thing was developing learner strategies in terms of grammar. Um, oh yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, in terms of grammar, so the, I, I asked, I actually asked a couple of students uh, in the past few weeks what they use, um, and a couple of different students use um, Voxy. This is Voxy.com, uh, B U S S U U, and Hello Hello as parallel as parallel grammar lessons almost, where they use them. In conjunction with the lessons that they get in class, they use these as almost a test and recall. And I don't know. Uh, I didn't encourage it, but I was just trying to think of other ways that they could use, they could develop grammar or use grammar or recycle grammar on their own, which is not so teacher based. So you could encourage them to to go on. Almost, I think all of these are free. Yeah, all of them are free. So you can encourage them to do them as well. Uh, and obviously, they cater for for different levels. Um, and we're looking at the same thing as Alexis. Um, we're, we're looking at language and context, really, I think, especially with, uh, with all levels, I suppose. You're not just teaching them the grammar, you're teaching them the grammar and context. There's no point, really, as, as discrete items. Um, functional language as well, so, so focusing on how to use the language in, in a particular structure, um, kind of develop that independence of use, so they're not just um, going, I am, you are, he is, so, uh, contextual use. And then parallel study with these apps. Yeah, cool, that was okay.